so what is the title of the poem the title of the poem is philosophy this poem is written by nisim ezekiel so before we discuss the poem philosophy let's have a brief discussion about the poet nisim ezekiel nisim ezekiel was born in 1924 and he was died in 2004 so he is a poet playwright editor and art critic so today we are going to discuss nisim ezekiel as a poet because we are going to discuss one of his poems and the title of that poem is philosophy so he was born in 1924 and he became graduated or he graduated in 1947 from wilson college mumbai or we can call at that time bombay university so he became or he completed his ba in literature from wilson college mumbai or from bombay university in 1947 48 means after ba so after the completion of the ba from bombay university he taught english literature in different colleges and after that in 1948 he went to england or in 19 in the november of 1948 he went to england and he studied philosophy at birbeck college london so coincidentally he was the student of philosophy and here we can find that he has written one poem and the title of the poem is also philosophy so we are going to discuss that poem philosophy in detail so his poem means he has written number of poems but his poem night of scorpion is very well known or nisim ezekiel is known for his poem night of scorpion or there are different poems or there are various poems written by the poet nisim ezekiel so for his poetry he won the sahitya academy award which is a very higher award in india so sahitya academy award or sahitya academy literary award he was won or he was awarded for his collection and what is the title of his collection latter day palms in 1983 so means nisim ezekiel awarded the sahitya academy award in 1983 and for the collection of poems latter day palms and dear students he has also awarded padma shri award in 1988 by indian government or by indian government so these are the two highest awards awarded for the poet nisim ezekiel so with this brief introduction of the poet nisim ezekiel we will move towards the poem and that poem is a philosophy so let's discuss the poem philosophy the poem philosophy is about philosophy and poetry so these are the two disciplines one is philosophy and another is poetry or we can say that this poem is about two faculties one is philosophy and another is poetry and the poet nisim ezekiel of the view or he opines that philosophy and science have certain limitations so the dear students here are three concepts one is philosophy another is poetry and third is science and poet has certain things in his mind and these things are which is superior 
whether the poetry is superior or philosophy is superior or science is superior and at the end of the poem poet says that poetry is superior than philosophy and science why because he says that there are certain limitations to whom to there are certain limitations to science and philosophy and that's why he says that poetry is superior than science and philosophy limitations means in marathi we call maryada so he says that poetry is superior than philosophy and science how he justifies it we are going to discuss in the poem so he says that poetry overtakes these two disciplines means poetry is superior than these two disciplines disciplines faculties for example philosophy and science he says that poetry overtakes philosophy and science how we are going to discuss in the poem my dear students there are four stanzas in this poem there are four stanzas and let's discuss uh, the poem philosophy so these are the three stanzas i will read these four stanzas and then we will discuss stanza by stanza so let's read the poem philosophy there is a place to which i often go not by planning to but by flow away from all existence to a cold lucidity whose will is uncontrolled here the means of god are never slow the landscape is in its geological prime dissolves to show its quintessential slime a million stars are blotted out i think of each historic passion as a blink that happened to the sad eye of a time these are the two stanzas then the third stanza but recite but residues of meaning still remain as darkest mists meander through the pane towards a final formula of a light i too reject this clarity of a sight what cannot be explained do not explain so this is the third stanza if you look at these stanzas we'll read the fourth one and then we'll go through the stanzas the mundane language of the senses sings its own interpretations the mundane language of the senses sings its own interpretations common things become by virtue of their commonness common things become by virtue of their commonness an argument against their nakedness an argument against their nakedness that dies of cold to find the truth it brings so these are the four stanzas each stanza contains five lines so the students let's discuss this poem stanza by stanza so the first stanza we try to read there is a place to which i often go not by planning to but by flow away from all existence to a cold lucidity whose will is uncontrolled here the miles of god are never slow so what the poet wants to say let's discuss so in the first stanza the poet says that what the poet says there is a place to which he often goes in the first stanza the poet says that there is a place to which he often goes he never plans to go but is driven by the flow flow his emotions thoughts his thoughts emotions and imagination that take him there means poet visits a place and he never thinking of going to that place but his emotions his thoughts driven away him to that place and how is the place the place described is not another city or world but the poet's own imagination so poet has the imagination or poet 
Imagine a certain place. And that place he visited often, often Sadar. For which reason? It is not known. His thoughts, his emotions, his imagination attracts that place. And that's why he visited that place. He goes away from all existence. He goes away from all existence. Means when he visits that place, he forgets everything. He forgets the sorrow. He forgets the happiness. He forgets he is existed. Existence, astitva. He goes away from all existence. Existence means that is the world and worldly things to place which is quite clear and without the warmth of human emotions and feelings. Means there is one imaginary place and that imaginary place is visited by the poet again and again and when he visit that place he forget everything sorrow happiness and he has the peace of mind then he says the will of the flow of thoughts is uncontrolled means we cannot control the flow of thoughts emotions feelings and that's why he says when he visit that particular place his emotions his thoughts are uncontrollable he cannot control these emotions and thought the thoughts and in the last line the poet talks about the mills of god which are never slow wills of god god means the creator he says that god he refers to the mind and god creates the creatures like that god creates the thoughts feelings and it these thoughts and feelings are uncontrollable so what is the stanza about the first stanza these five lines of the first stanza so these five lines talks about the place and that place is visited by the poet again and again and when he visits that place, he finds a peace of mind. And in that place, when he visits that place, he can keep creating new ideas. And these ideas cannot be controlled or regulated by the poet. See the students, we have certain place when we visit that place we feel a calmness we feel a certain kind of a peace of a mind and that is described in this poem or in this first stanza of the poem now we move towards the second stanza of the poem what the second stanza tells us in the second stanza the landscape landscape the imaginary place appears to contain each and everything that exists on earth and it dissolves everything to show perfect mud or mixing of everything means the place visited by the poet appears everything that exists on earth and it is dissolved everything and it shows perfect it is a perfect thing Means it's a kind of a philosophy. Afterward, a million stars vanish away. Means what? The poet thinks of his past or historic passion. And how was his past? His past was a sad. Means he thinks, suppose, now see, understand, dear students, suppose the poet is visited, the poet visits that place. And he says that this place is everything or he imagines the place which has everything and then he dissolves whatever the problems, he dissolves all the problems at that place and then he remembers his past. And how was the past? Past was full of emotions and sorrows. And how he 
imagines or how he experiences the past or how he remembers the past as a blink blink paapni lonya paryanta to kay karto tacha bhutka samjhun ghenacha prayatna karto so what the stanza second stanza is about the second stanza is about the time is personified means the poet thinks about the present time and also remembers the past time the poet wants to say that thousand of sorrows and griefs of the past appear before him in a blink the thousands of sorrows and griefs of the past appear before him in a blink it happens with us also when we are sitting at certain place we are at the present moment we are thinking about the present but at the blink at sudden time we remember our past and when we remember our past we remember a full of sorrows and full of emotions within a blink barobar ki nahi apan pan ekadya avdi cha thikani baslyanantar apan ekadya chhan mood madhe asto ani asha velela aplyala आपल्या एखादी भूतकाळातली गोष्ट आठ होती की ज्यामध्ये खूप दुःख होत किंवा ज्यामध्ये खूप भावना होत्या ती गोष्ट आपल्याला पापनी लवायच्या आत आठवते इट हॅपन्स विथ अल्सो सो इट इज डिस्क्राइब इन द सेकंड स्टांझा ऑफ द पोयम देन द थर्ड स्टांझा द पोएट सेज दॅट ऑर द पोएट वॉन्ट्स टू से दॅट in philosophy we cannot understand everything why because there are limitations and problems so in philosophy we cannot understand everything why because there are limitations limitations maryada and problems kai samasya hai kai maryada hai so we cannot understand everything in philosophy even in spite of having the clarity we still have some myths in our pains which make the meaning unclear suppose there is some clarity still we have some myths myths some feelings danta katha and pains kahi vedna so it becomes unclear this is why he rejects this clarity of a sight means if philosophy gives a clarity of a sight he rejects it the poet rejects it poet na karto e to and he wants to say that what cannot be explained do not explain the line simply means that if the meaning is not clear we cannot always keep looking into it rather give up and don't try to explain it again if the meaning is not clear if the meaning cannot be explained do not explain if the meaning is not clear try to give up give up so here the poet says that poetry is superior than philosophy poetry is superior than science why because science gives the clarity of a sight philosophy is philosophy gives the clarity of a sight but sometimes the clarity of a sight also become unclear unexplained so what we can do for example suppose we says there is a ear a i r ear barobar ki nahi war ahe ki wa hawa ahe if i says there is a ear we can feel the ear can we touch the ear no can we see the ear no apan asa manu shakto ki hawa 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 ahe tumhi manala sar mala dakhwa hawa kuthe ahe dakhwata yil ka nahi sparsh karta yil ka nahi pan hawa ahe ki nahi ahe so hawa ahe he kasa ek clear hai clarity of sight pan tyache proof deta yil ka aplyala ki dakhwa hawa hawa aplyala pata yil ka nahi pata yil hawa aplyala catch karta yil ka nahi मी हवेला कॅच केलं नाही करता येणार सो इट बिकम्स अनक्लिअर आणि दॅट्स वाय ही सेज दॅट फिलॉसॉफी अँड सायन्स हॅव सर्टन लिमिटेशन्स म्हणजे तत्वज्ञानाला आणि कवितेला तत्वज्ञानाला आणि विज्ञानाला काही काय मर्यादा आहेत 
पण कवितेला काही मर्यादा नाहीत असं म्हणणं या ठिकाणी कवीचं आहे सो आफ्टर द थर्ड स्टांजा लेट्स डिस्कस द फोर्थ वन इन द फोर्थ स्टांजा पोएट हॅव डिस्कस्ड फिलॉसॉफी सायन्स and he gives certain limitations of philosophy and science and then he says that the poetry is superior than philosophy the poetry is superior than philosophy why he says that the language of the senses tells about everything sense the language of senses tells about everything by itself so no need of a clarity of a thoughts but language of senses tells everything aple je language of senses senses manje kare savedna tells everything by itself it does not rely on clarity like philosophy and rather depends on human feelings and that's why he says that poetry gives the language of sense when we read the poem we use the language of sense and that's why he says that poetry is superior than philosophy and science at the last he says common things become common because of human feelings and love for them they become arguments for themselves and would die if they try to find truth and meaning in themselves if we are trying to find the meaning in common things so the poet says that these common things will die and we cannot get any meaning in these common things so the dear students this poem philosophy is about uh we can say that uh three things he used here the first is poetry philosophy and science and the poet wants to say that the poetry is superior than what science and philosophy so i hope you understand the poem if you have any doubts 